Okay, another one. This is a mm -hmm. weird one, boy. Is uh, ER equals this EPR? Is, this is probably it, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> so ER equals EPR is uh, Einstein-Rosenbridge equals Einstein-Podolsky-Rosenbridge posits a deep connection between quantum entanglement and space-time geometry, uh, specifically Einstein- Rosen bridge, commonly known as wormholes. It suggests that entangled particles are connected by a non-traversable wormhole. So tiny wormholes connected. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can say that this is not uh, a situation we can follow the chalk. We can't start at the beginning and calculate to the end. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's still a conjecture. I think it's very profound though. Um, I kind of imagine Juan Maldacena, who's part of this with Lenny Suskin, they were kind of like, oh, it's like ER equals EPR. They couldn't even formulate it properly. It was like an intuition that they had kind of landed on and now are trying to formalize. But to take a step back, one way of thinking about ER equals EPR, you have to talk about holography first. And holography, both Juan Maldacena really formalized it, Lenny Suskin suggested it. The idea of a black hole hologram is that all of the information in the black hole, whatever it is, whatever, you know, entropy as a measure of information, uh, whatever the entropy of the black hole is, which is telling you how much information is hidden in there, how much information you don't have direct access to in some sense, um, is completely encoded in the area of the black hole meaning as the area grows, the entropy grows, it does not grow as the volume. This is actually turns out to be really, really important. If I tried to pack a lot of information into a volume, more information than I could pack, let's say, on the surface of a black hole, I would simply make a black hole. And I would find out, oh, I can't have more information than I can fit on the surface. So Lenny coined this a hologram. People who take it very seriously say, well, Again, maybe the interior of the black hole just doesn't exist. It's a holographic projection of this two-dimensional surface. In fact, maybe I should take it all the way and say, so are we. Mm -hmm. The whole universe is a holographic projection of a lower dimensional surface, right? And so people have struggled, nobody's really landed it, to find a universe version of it. Oh, maybe there's a boundary to the universe where all the information is encoded, and this entire three-dimensional reality that's so compelling and so convincing is actually just a holographic projection. Juan Maldacena did something absolutely brilliant. It's the most highly cited paper in the history of physics. It was published in the late 90s. Uh, it has a very opaque title that would not lead you to believe it's as revelatory as it is. But he was able to show that a universe, like in a box with gravity in it, it's not the same universe we observe, doesn't matter. It's just a hypothetical called an anti desitter space. This universe in a box, it has gravity, it has black holes, it has everything gravity can do in it. On its boundary is uh, a theory with no gravity a universe that can be described with no gravity at all, so no black holes and no information loss problem, and they're equivalent. That the interior universe in a box is a holographic projection of this quantum mechanics on the boundary, pure quantum mechanics, purely unitary, no loss of information. None of this stuff could possibly be true. There can't be loss of information if this dictionary really works, if the interior is a hologram, a projection of the boundary. I know that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, uh, there's some mathematics there, there's mm -hmm. physics, and then there's mm -hmm. trying to conceal what that actually means practically for, for us. Mm -hmm. Well, what it would mean for us is that information can't be lost, even if we don't know how to show it in the description in which there are black holes. It means it can't possibly be lost because it's equivalent to this description with no gravity in it at all, no event horizons, no black holes, just quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. So it really strongly suggested that, that quantum mechanics was going to win in this battle, but it didn't show exactly how it was going to win. So then comes ER equals EPR. A visual way to imagine what this means. So ER has to do with little wormholes. EPR, Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, has to do with quantum entanglement. The idea was, well, maybe the stuff that's interior to the black hole is quantum entangled, like EPR, quantum entangled, with the Hawking radiation outside the black hole that's escaping. And that quantum entanglement is what 
allows you to extract the information because it's not actually physically moving from the interior to the exterior. It's it's just subtle quantum entanglement. And in fact, I can kind of think of the entire black hole. If I look at it, it looks like a solid shadow cast on the sky, some region of space-time. If I look at it very closely, I will see, oh no, it's actually sewn from these quantum wormholes, like embroidered. And so when I get up close, it's almost as though the event horizon isn't the fundamental uh, feature on the space-time. The fundamental feature is the quantum entanglement embroidering the, the event horizon. Embro the embroidering is, is just tiny wormholes. So the quantum ent entanglement is when two particles are connected at arbitrary distances. And they're connected by a wormhole. And in this case, they would be connected by a wormhole. Mm -hmm. So the reason why that's helpful, it helps you connect the interior to the exterior yeah. without trying to pass through the now, event horizon. The cons of this theory <laughs> is highly conceptual and abstract. The exact mechanism for information retrieval via these non-traversable wormholes is not fully understood. Primarily explored in theoretical toy models. Whoa, Gemini going hard. <laughs> uh, theoretical toy models like the anti Sitter space, space time, rather than realistic black holes. True. We do what we can do in baby steps. 